Lately, there has been a considerable amount of interest among my listeners around the topic of how to become an enterprise architect. Now, I've covered this topic in one of my previous episodes, and it would be a good idea to go listen to it. I've covered the kind of experience that you require to be an enterprise architect, and how much experience, and what technical skills, and what soft skills, and so on and so forth. But I see that there is a good amount of curiosity around TOGAF certification. Um, well, enterprise architecture certifications, but specifically around TOGAF certification. Now, among all the enterprise architecture frameworks that are out there, I personally think that the TOGAF framework is the best. And there are n number of reasons for it. I am also Zachman certified, by the way, and I have a tremendous amount of respect uh, for John Zachman. He's the father of enterprise architect, and it is an absolute pleasure to be in his presence, to attend his training, and to, to have discussions with him. Having said that, I do think that TOGAF framework is a little bit better than uh, Zachman framework for various reasons. One of the reasons is it's an evolving framework, which means as uh, technology progresses or as uh, business landscape changes, uh, the TOGAF framework has kept itself updated with those. Now, for that, John Zachman says that Zachman framework is an ontology and doesn't need to change with the changing technologies. And he's right, and there is an upside to it, but but there is a downside to, as well, to it as well. It also means that every time you need to implement an enterprise architecture using Zachman, there's a lot of work that you need to go through, where TOGAF helps us out a lot. There are so many reference guides and reference materials and so on and so forth, which, uh, which are very handy, which are very practical. There are techniques and guidelines and tips and tricks and various things which are uh, very useful for an everyday enterprise architect. Besides that, there are many other things. There is the TOGAF library, where you will find a lot of publications and journals and guides and etc., which help you out. It also helps us in understanding how to set up an enterprise architecture practice within your organization, which is not covered by Zachman, by the way. So, so if you're setting up an enterprise architecture practice in the, in your organization fresh, what are the things that you should keep in mind? It's, you know, covered by the TOGAF framework. So there are, N number of reasons, and I'm going to dedicate a podcast on why Toga Framework, I think, is better than Zachman. But right now, suffice it to say that if you want to be an enterprise architect, Toga Framework and Toga Certification is a way to go. Now, if you are planning to do Toga Certification, the best thing to do would be to get a training. Um, there are various reasons for that. One of the most important reasons is that it packages the entire information in one single unit and and delivers it to you in the appropriate sequential order right and these toga trainings are all obviously authorized by the open group so i'm, I'm saying if you're going for a training choose a training provider that is an authorized training provider for the open group i'm not going to recommend anyone specifically uh, uh, because i'm not sure which one to go for and the reason i'm not sure which one to go for is because i personally have not taken any trainings i um, I did my TOGAS certification in the version 8.1.1. That's about, I don't know, 12, 13, 15 years ago. And then it got upgraded to TOGAF 9 and then 9.1 and then 9.2. And now I am TOGAF 10. And every time I have upgraded my certification to the latest version. One facility that the open group provides is that if you're upgrading your certification, you don't have to give the full exam again. It gives you a bridge exam, which primarily tests you on the knowledge that is newly added to the latest version of TOGAF. So uh, so it's a little bit easier than uh, giving the full exam up front. So it's a smaller exam with a smaller set of questions and so on. Now, going back to the topic of how to prepare for TOGAF, the best thing to do would be to take a training. And like I said before, I'm not going to recommend one over the other. Go to the open group and you will find a list of authorized training providers you can pick one or, you know, just Google search for an authorized training provider and you will find one. And then do a comparative analysis on the cost and the, you know, the content and so on and so forth. If they are authorized training provider, then the content is going to be the same because the content is uh, mandated by the open group that these are the standards that you're going to have to meet if you want to be an authorized training provider. So that doesn't matter. The only thing then matters is, well, one is the fringe benefits that the training provider provides you, like you know, simulation exams or video recordings or what have you. Um, second is the quality of the trainer. 
Now, what I want to cover today, primarily, is that if you were to try the certification without the training, then how would you go about it? Now, personally, I did not go undergo the training throughout my entire time. I mean, since 8.1.1 to 9 to 9.1 to 9.2 and now 10, I've never undergone any training to get the certification. I've prepared myself and I'm, I've given the exam. So how do you go about preparing for the exam? So that's what we will talk about briefly today. So the first thing that you need to do is to go to the opengroup.org. It's a website, uh, the open group website. Go to opengroup.org and then create a user ID. Now, I already have a user ID. So all I have to do is log in to the open group and I will only show you how to uh, you know, log in. But what you really need to do is create a user ID for yourself. Once you've logged in to the website, go to the TOGAF library. Here you will see there is a TOGAF standard, uh, which is the first link. And then there is TOGAF series guide. So click on the TOGAF standard. And you'll find a link here that says the TOGAF standard 10th edition. Click on that. And this chance it might ask you to log in one more time. It's sometimes it there's a glitch on the website. So click on login to download and it'll redirect you to the login page and then kick you right back in. And then you click on view HTML edition and click add to downloads. Once you've done this, it'll take you to the downloads page where you click on the link and this will open up the uh, Togaf standard book. Now there is a misconception that the Togaf standard book needs to be downloaded or it needs to be purchased or what have you. That is not true. The entire book is available to read online. There are six different sections to the TOGAF framework. There is the introduction and core concepts, architecture development method, ADM techniques, applying the ADM, architecture content, and enterprise architecture capability and governance. Each of these sections uh, is what you need to read. So introduction and core uh, concepts cover all of TOGAF in general. Architecture development method is a step-by-step, phase-by-phase methodology that covers uh, all the phases of the ADM starting from architecture vision all the way till architecture requirements management. And then, like I said before, there are a lot of techniques that uh, AD, uh, and that TOGAF offers. Um, ADM techniques covers those uh, techniques. So things such as requirement gathering or stakeholder management or, uh, you know, gap analysis or some migration planning techniques like how do you prioritize your projects? On what basis would you prioritize your projects? So techniques like that, risk management, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then you have applying the architecture development method. So how do you apply the ADM? Now, there are various phases of the ADM, as you know, and uh, you, know, you need to iterate over it. So how do you iterate over it? Do you iterate over the whole process? What if you require iterations within do you go in one particular order or can you go back, you know, and so on and so forth. So all these questions are answered here. There are also um, layers in the architecture development method that we we, need, we should, we can look at. And then we have architecture content. So architecture content is the actual content framework that the TOGAF framework provides, which covers a major chunk of the TOGAF framework. Zakman framework technically can be called a a content framework because because TOGAF content is a parallel to the Zakman framework because Zakman framework tells you uh, all the different kinds of contents that you can create while you are doing enterprise architecture and TOGAF content also does that. TOGAF architecture content framework also does that. It tells you what are the different deliverables uh, that you can create in each phase of the ADM, you know, and there, there are concepts of um, building blocks and, 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 and artifacts and so on and so forth, which uh, uh, which are covered in the architecture content section of the TOGAF framework. And then finally, we have the architecture capability, which covers how do you set up an enterprise architecture practice within an organization. So if you're new to enterprise architecture and you're just setting up the enterprise architecture practice within your organization, then how do you set it up? That's the core body of knowledge. That's what we call the TOGAF fundamental content. But that's not all that you have to study if you're going to study for an exam. 
There's also the concept of series guides. If you click on series guides um, in the TOGAF library, it'll open up this page in which all the different series guides are there. Um, so, for example, business intelligence and analytics or metadata management or uh, business capability planning, value streams, um, series uh, business architecture or architecture maturity model, organization mapping, applying the TOGAF ADM using agile sprints or government reference model, which is a reference model to all government websites. If you are running a government website and if you would like to uh, do enterprise architecture there, then how do you do that? That's a reference guide to that. And then uh, there is also another page in which you have microservices architecture. You've got uh, integrating risk and security within a TOGAF enterprise architecture. You have enabling enterprise agility and business capabilities. All of these series guides are important from an exam standpoint. But most important is the digital technology adoption. While all of the series guides are a very good read, uh, but there are some series guides which are more important than the others from an exam standpoint. So, and that's my experience because I've recently given the exam. So I saw that some of these questions were uh, more focused on some of these topics, right? Now, I'm not saying that these are the only series guides that you should read, uh, but some of these are more important. And what I'll do is I'll list down these series guides in the show notes so that you can download those and give them more importance. But uh, do read all of the series guides if possible. So uh, what I'm trying to say is earlier, up until TOGAF 9.2, the core body of knowledge or the fundamental content, as we call it, the book, was the only thing that was important from an exam standpoint. You didn't have to worry about the series guides. Series guides were just, um, you know, reference guides that you use as an enterprise architect uh, on your day-to-day -day job as an enterprise architect. But now they, what they've done is they've made it more strict. So now from an exam standpoint, you have to study the series guides, right? There's fundamental content and the series guides. So in the series guides, there are, uh, there are some series guides which are important, such as digital technology adoption or uh, digital business reference model or doing enterprise architecture using agile sprints or enabling enterprise agility or leader's guide to setting up an enterprise architecture practice and so on and so forth. And I'm going to list down all the important ones in the show notes. Uh, but understand this, just reading the fundamental content is not sufficient. You will also have to give importance to series guides, some more than the others. So that's how you prepare for the TOGAF certification without a training. Now, I am not recommending that you do this. Remember, what I'm saying is the best approach and the easiest approach is to go for a training because then uh, everything is packaged into one single unit and they will deliver the training. They'll deliver the content on a, in a appropriate sequence. So, you know, the understanding is excellent and you won't have to worry about what comes first, what comes last and you know, how everything connects together and build a picture and all of that. But in case if you want to go on an adventure like I did uh, of not doing the training, then this is the stuff that you're going to have to read. Uh, there's no specific sequence to it. I didn't have a specific sequence to it. Uh, I read it in the order that the book has. And then I went into the series guide, studied them separately. And there's a tremendous amount of help that you get on the open group website. If you explore the website a little bit, you'll find study material out there that you can you know, look at or uh, there are some simulation papers also that you can download. I think there's a good amount of material out there on the website, uh, which you can refer to before you give the exam. So if you are planning to give the TOGAF exam and if you are studying for it, then I wish you all the best. It's a, um, it's a, it's a good career path and it's a good certification program and it has a good amount of respect in the industry today you won't get a job just based on the certificate but um, uh, but it's a good start you know it's a good start for you to open up your mind and start thinking about how organizations are run or how businesses are run and and to have 10 actually has become a lot more practical than it was before uh, before it was a lot more theoretical now they have come to realize that organizations are becoming more and more digital and more and more lean. And they've introduced the concepts of agile and lean and, and, and digital enterprises and so on and so forth into the concept of TOGAP. They've also changed the way we view enterprise architecture from what it used to be before. Earlier, it, 
enterprise architecture used to mean a very very bureaucratic organization that uh, that becomes red tape that basically doesn't enable the business to do their job better on the contrary it is a standards organization that performs governance and and in and is blocking every single path of development and growth that was the view that enterprise architecture used to have earlier now they've changed the view a little bit they've created a perspective where enterprise architecture is an enabler of the lean and digital enterprises that we have become today and that is the need of the hour i think and that's the only way that we can do excellent enterprise architecture so once again i wish you all the best um, i hope this podcast helps you out in in your study once again i would like to remind you <laughs> that enterprise architecture radio is not a podcast alone it is also an enterprise architecture community it's a collaboration platform it brings all enterprise architects together so that they can um, learn from each other they can help each other out they can guide each other but most importantly have fun <laughs>